Dynamic Shape Modeling Transformer Rig. My name is Barry Kimball. Overview. This lesson will demonstrate how to use the Transformer Rig to modify STL data. Understand the geometry types acceptable for transformation, how to set up a predefined Transformer Rig, and how to use boundary constraints. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to use the transformer rig to modify STL data. The key learning objectives are understanding the types of geometry that can be modified, how to use predefined modifiers, and how to establish positional constraints. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to use the transformer rig to modify data. In this case, we'll be modifying an STL file. So an STL file is triangles or polygons. And in this case, there's some errors in this polygonal data set. And that doesn't matter. The transformer rig doesn't, doesn't care. And we're going to be adding some seat height, approximately one inch of seat height, with a constraint around the perimeter of carryover parts and frame. So we don't want any of the perimeter to move. So anything I'm highlighting with my cursor. And we'd like this shape to be raised approximately one inch and come back to this spot. So to do that, I'm going to define a modifier, predefine a modifier, where I've got a surface. And if we turn off perspective and look at this straight in this view, I've got a surface that kind of approximates this shape and another surface that's one inch higher. And I've made this modification specifically with some things in mind. So if you look at the front, I've kept the first two rows of control vertices on both surfaces the same. This will maintain the tangency at the end of, of the part. So this STL file, even once modified, won't move a whole lot right here. The rest of the movements are all straight in the vertical direction. If I independently created these surfaces and moved these control vertices left and right in a uh, uncontrolled way, the rig moves the control vertices in those same un uncontrolled directions. So in this case, I want everything to move basically straight up or no movement whatsoever on the ends. So now that I've got my modifiers set up, let's turn let's set the rig up. And we can turn perspective back on. So the transformer rig is found under the palette object edit dynamic shape modeling transformer rig. Now the pick mask tells you what what's available to modify and in this case we're not going to modify surfaces or curves can also move groups and instances, but we're going to just move meshes. So I could turn these off and box select on the screen, and if there were curves and surfaces, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be picked. I'll accept that as the target. Now I need to pick the predefined modifiers. So I'm going to go back to modify, turn this layer on for the modifiers, turn my pick mask on so that it will allow me to pick surfaces. And I want to go from here, so here's my origin, to here. And there's my destination. And I'll select Go. In the data, you can see the before and after. The green is the uh, approximation of the before and after. And it's moved it from here up to there. But our entire boundary has moved in a similar fashion. Almost no movement here. Maximum movement here, where this is the most changed, and little to no movement at all back here. So what I'd like to do now is set up an additional constraint, and I'll turn off my shading. So I'll turn some constraint surfaces on. These are just some simple flanges that I've constructed around the perimeter of the part. And if I switch to some diagnostic shading, you can see they're just straight, small surfaces that quickly define the perimeter. And I'm going to now tell the system to use those as a positional constraint. 
So under the constraints, I will add for position. The, the option that's pressed down or the button that's clicked is what you're setting. I'm also going to look at my pick mask and set it to only pick surface data. That way I don't get curves or extra meshes or anything else. And I simply select this geometry and be careful not to select your input geometry or your modifiers. And I accept those constraints and I tell the rig to go. So now it's not it's not maintaining tangency along these edges, it's simply maintaining a positional relationship to what it was before and it's blending back to the original. So you can see I'm still touching here, but I've now in the side view moved from this height up to this height. And it's not an exact touch, so it's not touching this surface. It's only as close to this surface as it was to this original surface. So that I'm just this is just a design check. Now one interesting thing you could do or a, a way to um, to show the difference if you query edit this and you open the uh, transformer rig options you can show all geometry so this now shows the before and the after another option is to select this data delete the construction history and when you delete the construction history it gives you a templated version of the original so now if I turn off the modifiers and the constraints this is templated we could pick this, move it straight up, toggle template, and we can see the difference in the thickness of the seat, where we have one inch thicker. Now that's how you use the transformer rig to modify STL files with the predefined modifier. In this lesson you learned what geometry types can be modified, how to use a predefined modifier, and how to set up and establish positional constraints.